Welcome back and joining us on the show now is Mr. Lal Bhatia, who's chairman at the Hillshaw Group. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, thank you so much for taking time for us today. I want to start with the macros first, and we're looking at geopolitics. Markets also are awaiting the U.S. Fed policy meeting in the next week. And in the meanwhile, we have seen some safe haven into many of these tangible commodities just about continue. How would you look at the way the month of October has panned out, where most of the commodities are trading in the positive? Well, uh, first of all, a very good afternoon to you, and thank you for having me. Uh, you know, it's the Chinese uh, that the the Chinese market that is mm. going to dictate a lot of things. Number one, if you look at China by itself, uh, sixty percent of every mineral that is dug goes to China. Uh, it has increased the consumption from 15% in the 2000s to about 50% today. Therefore, China plays a very, very important role in how the commodities market will dictate. Uh, that's the first point. The second important thing that needs to be understood is that uh, based on the on the last week's Belt and Road Forum that happened in China, uh, most of the infrastructure spending that had to be done in the $1 trillion plan is coming to an end. So there's going to be a shift uh, from the most infrastructure spending to uh, the spending in consumer confidence and services. Based on that, I feel, in my opinion, that there's a lot of volatility that's going to be coming in to these markets. And, uh, you know, we need to be cognizant of that. Hmm. You know, Mr. Bhatia, the whole this year went uh, in expectation that the Chinese demand will come back. And China, while did keep trying with smaller measures, stimuluses here and there, we haven't seen that make a big uh, impact or a dent on commodities until now. What's your sense on how are we headed towards an end of the year with what China's been doing? Well, it all depends upon the pace and the fiscal spending that uh, China would be, uh, would, uh, be implementing. I believe that uh, the end of the year will be the way it is, but but come 2024, we might see a lot of spending because the, this this package that that's just been announced a few days ago is basically towards revamping the the consumer confidence, and hopefully that will dictate its terms on the property markets out there. That is stagnant now and uh the point is the bigger issue is that whether the markets go up and down uh the chinese people are very innovative and entrepreneurial hmm. uh the only quality is would, would that, that would that would, would those qualities be allowed to flourish or into this capitalistic communist uh communist uh, uh, forum, or will mm. the Marxist uh, contradictions come in place? That'll dictate mm. a lot in the overarching uh, pictures of the way the markets would be dictated. Clearly. I'm sure politics and geopolitics, it's center stage right now. But also, what's your sense on the price views going forward when you look at many of these commodities and whether it's going to be about on what the U.S. Fed does on how Chinese demand comes back within the commodities? What would your favorite topics be? Uh, within the commodities, I think uh, the... Uh, the... EV vehicles that are being built in uh, China uh, is taking off. The only question is, would the consumers out there be able to spend it or would, would China have to depend on exports because lack of local consumption? But then, but then we have a bigger problem there is, is are these trade wars? Would hmm. that be able to be 
uh, curtailed? Would that be able to be controlled? All these factors come in, into play. In my opinion, okay. 2024 would be a great year to uh, to see. And and the, the major issue out here is the the global economy and and these trade wars which are coming into play. Hmm. Clearly that. But as you said, EV is going to be a place to watch out for. And clearly the energy transition is going to be yet another forum that will perhaps play out in 2024. Mr. Bhatia, thank you so much for joining us and giving us an insight on what to watch and especially, of course, on what to look for in China as we get into the new year. But with that, let's slip into a short break. We will get you more market action on the other side.